at some point in math, most likely probably in grade 11, maybe even earlier, depending on your teachers and then what you're studying, you're gonna run into um, the problem of trying to take the degree measurements of angles and then actually relating them back to radians. Now, radians uh, is basically just a measure of with respect to a circle and you can map out any degree that you like. So for example, 45 degrees to a corresponding arc on the circle and the length of that particular arc, we can measure in radians and they're actually proportional to each other, um, especially when you have kind of this nice uh, circle that I've given you here with all the different degrees. Now, students are introduced to measuring angles in elementary school, and so it's something that they kind of remember. Now, I'm gonna take these angles that you have here, and I'll create kind of a coordinate system, so X and Y, so that it um, kind of shows that that zero is, you know, through the X axis, and then the 90 degrees goes, you know, kind of straight up, and so on. And of course, we're measuring the angles um, kind of counterclockwise from the right hand side and then we're kind of going around the circle you know measuring the actual angle itself now it doesn't have to be measured that way you can you know set a convention which is different but in school this is typically what we do so the goal of this video is just to take your degree measurements and then introduce you to the equivalent kind of arc the length of the arc on the circle which is measured in radians for basically a unit circle so where the radius of the circle is equal to one. And I'm gonna just show you what I mean by that in just a moment. So if I have this uh, circle, I'm gonna construct kind of, so as I said, so first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, construct my kind of Y axis, okay? So I'm gonna do something like this, okay? And I'm gonna construct my X axis as best as I can here. Gonna shift it so it does go go through as best as we can here. Okay, so let's say it goes through that. So this is my x-axis and then this is my y-axis that I have right there. Now I'm gonna construct my circle within here um, so that it kind of corresponds to this uh, particular circle that we have. So I'm gonna overlap it like this. All right, so here's my circle. And now you can make the assumption that this um, length okay, of the radius, so the radius itself, is basically equivalent or equal to one. And when you take that one, you know, you can map this arc um, and you can kind of swing it around anywhere you like. And of course, as you can see, you know, you can find exactly what um, the actual degrees in terms of the angle is. Say if this is the angle starting from zero, okay, when the zero is kind of right at the flat line to the right hand side. So in this case, I could say, okay, well, you know, what's the angle? I'm gonna zoom in here, kind of cheat a little bit. So notice that it's, you know, here's 140, and then it's gonna be kind of, you know, here's 141, 142, 143, 144. So it kind of falls in the middle there, but we can take this and map it basically to any angle that we like, right? So let's say if I wanted right on 140, which would have been, let's say right there, I could do that if I wanted to. What students um, wanna be able to know is, if you started here, let's say, you know, right at, and I'm gonna just kind of do it on the outside. So if you started in here and you started to travel kind of in this direction, right? And you started to go in this direction and you wanted to find the actual arc, the length of that arc, okay? So let's say if it was um, the length between, and I'm gonna here go back and let's say I wanted to find what this arc was from here from zero to 30, so what that length actually is, maybe let me highlight it like this, would be a little bit better. So if I wanted to know what that length of that arc is, now because it is an arc, it would be some portion of the actual circle. Now, what do we know about the circle? So if you go all the way around the circumference of that circle, we know that the circumference 
okay if we go all the way around in here so if i go in this direction okay and i kind of swing back all the way around here like this okay then we know that that is equal to 2 pi right so whatever circle that we have it's going to be 2 pi times the radius but since in this case we set the radius equal to 1 then it is just 2 pi so now if I want to know exactly what that portion is, so you know, if it was this portion right here, now of course the green one would have a bigger radius, okay, than the blue one that you see in there, uh, but I'm just doing it so just for the visual. In this case, if you wanted to find out what that is, you know, if you went straight from here, um, we know what this angle is. So let's say this angle is 30 degrees, and that's what it's mapped out to. And what would that equal? in terms of the actual arc length. Now that arc length, we basically call that radiance. Okay, so that is the length that we have, okay, starting from zero and then seeing how far do you actually go. And as you can see, you can map the degrees back to the length of that arc that you're creating um, pretty easily. Now, when we say pretty easily, what we mean is the following. So what do I know? I know the fact that any angles going around the circle are going to be equivalent to 360 degrees. And so what I'm doing now is just setting up uh, basically a ratio and a proportion between the two. And what I do know is that if my radius is equal to one, then the entire arc length all the way around is two pi. Now, if I want to know what 30 degrees is, okay, so that is a proportion, right, of the 360. So it's going to be some ratio between the 30 and the 360. And that ratio has to be equivalent here to the amount of radiance, okay, and we call that rad, typically for short. You know, what would this actually be equivalent to? Well, it's like solving this um, equation for what rad stands for. You can call it x if you wanted to, uh, but I'm trying to avoid it because of the actual x in terms of the x-axis. So if I wanted to solve this, so notice what would happen is I would have to now take, okay, so it would have been 30 over 360. Now the 2 pi I would bring over to the other side, and then I can actually solve for whatever that arc length actually equals. And this, you know, so if I would do that, you would notice that, well, 30, okay, goes into 360 12 times. So that is 1 over 12. And then 2 pi, so this is really just 2 pi over 12. Now reducing this, it's going to be just pi over 6. And that is the equivalent of 30 degrees in terms of an angle to the actual arc length. Um, if it is 30 degrees as your angle. So that's what the actual length would have been equal to. So this length right here would have been pi over 6. And in math, we love this translation between degrees and the actual radiance. So I'm going to start calling them radiance instead of, you know, the arc length, okay, around. Um, why? Because we actually utilize it quite a bit in applications where we don't really use angles especially if you're going to be introduced to something like functions and you're going to be graphing, for instance, maybe, and you're studying trigonometry, so like sine, cosines, and tangents, and secants, and so on. So our input, we know that for sines, okay, the ratios are with respect to angles. But now what we like to do is we know that we have an equivalent for each angle. So 30 degrees is really just pi over 6. Now you can keep going, right, and continue here and find all the different values that you would want to be able to find. Now the translation between the degrees that you have and radiance really just follows from that equation that I gave you. So if you ever want to know, okay, so really what you're doing is you're just setting up a proportion between 360 degrees. This is whatever the value in degrees is. 
Here, that is equivalent to 2 pi, because that's the length when the radius is equal to 1, and that is your value of rad. So if someone gives you degrees, you can always solve for the radians. If someone gives you radians, you can always go back and solve for the degrees, so you can go back and forth between them. Now, when you do this, so an, an easier way is, you know, you can rearrange this formula. So radians, really what they equal is, they equal to degrees over 360, um, and then it is being multiplied by 2 pi. And sometimes, you know, people remember because 2 goes into 360, so what, they'll, what you might see is something like this, where it's just pi over 180. And that is the value of the radians. And you can find that for anything. So for instance, you know, if you want to find what is 90 degrees in terms of radians, well, what that equals is, so radians is equal to, so this is 90, and then multiplied by pi over 180. So notice 90 goes into 180. So this is just really pi over 2. And that should, it shouldn't surprise you because 90 degrees is basically a quarter of a circle, right? So if it's a quarter of a circle and the whole circle is 2 pi, then a quarter is going to be pi over 2. So some of these you're going to be able to know very quickly. For instance, 180 degrees, you know it's half a circle, so that's going to be just pi. 360 degrees is going to be 2 pi, right? 270 degrees, which is 3 quarters of a circle, which is... It's, it's going to be, um, in that case, okay, so the, the, the 270, you would just simply take, you would multiply it by pi 180, and you would notice that it's just 3 pi over 2, and so on, and you can do that with anything, okay? So for you as a student, um, it's actually kind of worthwhile to be able to transition these degrees back into actually radiance. Now, I'm going to map a few for you here, and I'm going to do this in kind of fast-forward fashion just so that you can see okay, the common ones. Because, for example, when you're studying trigonometry, um, you may remember that some of the useful ones are 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, because those have pretty nice and common sines and cosines and, and tangents. And then the same thing, if the angle is greater than 90, you know, you may want to know what is 120 degrees, 135 degrees, um, 150 degrees, because that's in the second quadrant, and then you continue on. So I'm going to actually create this entire thing. I'll map it out for you, and then you yourself can decide if you want to keep it, you know, take a screenshot um, of it. All right, so I'll transition all the degrees back into radiance, and now hopefully you know how to do that on your own. All right, so welcome back. Um, so there you have it. So I, what I did was I took kind of the different degrees that we have. I guess we can ask, you know, we can add zero degrees as well. Okay, so it's gonna be zero radians. And those are the equivalents. We have 30 degrees, which is pi over six, 45 degrees, which is pi over four, you know, 60 degrees, which is pi over three and it continues on. So 90 pi over 2, and then you can see in the second quadrant, third quadrant, and so on. Now, please again, so remember that radiance, really it's just kind of the length of the arc, right, that we have, but it is matched up with degrees of the angle, and we actually use them kind of interchangeably. Now, one thing that you will note, and something you're going to have to be mindful of, and actually something that I made mistakes on, um, is your calculators are kind of preset for angles. So when you're working with angles and you're taking, for instance, sines and cosines and tangents, just make sure that your calculator is set either to degrees, if you're going to be inputting degrees, or it's set to radians. So you will see, you know, you're going to have a choice. Now, of course, every calculator is a little bit different, um, but, you know, make sure that you set it to degrees or radians to whatever it is that you're actually going to be utilizing on that calculator all right and so this whole thing okay so what i'm going to do kind of as a final um, item 
let me copy this. Okay, so right here, and I'm gonna shift it over and shift it down actually. Let me copy and you know put it on a fresh page, okay, right here, so it's not as maybe as cluttered. And there you have it. All right, so now you can um, see the whole thing and just the highlighted angles in terms of uh, from 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, and so on. You, of course, can you know, use the other one as, as well. You can take a screenshot and just keep it for yourself if you wanted um, for later reference. Now, what I used to do is I used to kind of remember the ones in the first quadrant and then try um, to just extrapolate from those uh, into the second, third, and then the fourth quadrant um, as you go through. And then whenever you're in doubt or you forget, you know, you can always kind of go back and then do the calculation for yourself between the degrees and radians, um, you know, mapping between 360 and then 2 pi. Um, so that's the final word, okay? Uh, hopefully you found this uh, useful and I'm sure and I hope that your teachers actually teach this at some point in grade 10 or 11 and you're not going to be seeing it for the first time in maybe grade 12 or maybe even university or, you know, colleges or something. All right. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.